Hello, hello, hello. Thank you for joining Monumental Moments in God's Word. I am hoping and praying that you all are with me on tonight and that you are excited about another day that God has given us. Another day that we walk in the land of the living. Another day to actually praise ye the Lord. Another day to join in and worship with us and to give God glory and praise. Another day to just uh, bless the Lord. Another day to get things right. Another day to come before his presence with thanksgiving and enter into his courts with praise. I praise the Lord on tonight. God is a good God. He is um, He is everything, everything to, to me. He's everything to me and to all to him I owe. I owe God everything because he's just been that good. He's merciful. His uh, truth endures to all generations. He has been my, my shield, my protector, my peacemaker, the love of my life. He's been the, my all in all when I didn't feel like I had anybody. So I praise God. I praise God. I praise God. Don't nobody know what God has done for me. Don't nobody know how good God has been to me. And for that, I say thank you. I am just uh, adding some people. I want you all to press uh, like and share. Please share this video. Share this um, watch uh, watch party. Um, want everybody that can and will just share, share, share. Um, God is good. You know, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. I thank God for his salvation. I thank God for, for everything, every good and perfect thing that God has given and done for me. I thank God for the valleys. I thank God for the hilltops, because if it was not for being in the valley, if it was not for the things that I had to overcome, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I don't know where I'd be, but if it hadn't have been for my learning, the things that God has allowed me to go through, the good, the bad, the ugly, the indifference, all of that, if it had not been for God on my side, I don't know where I would be. I don't know what type of person I would have become. I am just godly, godly thankful that he is everything to me. So we're going to be coming in. I'm going to, um, we're going to be, um, talking tonight about is what I've been given enough? Is what I've been given enough? Use God's gift to, for his glory. Use God's gifts that he's given you for his glory. And, and, and the answer to that is it is enough. God is enough. And what he's given us is enough. And so we're going to start out. I'm going to start out with Vicki Yohi in In the Waiting Room. In the Waiting. Um, in the Waiting. It's uh, I Just Want You. It's Vicki Yohi. We're going to start out with just a little worship. Hallelujah. I just want you to just take on what's being said. She's a wonderful, wonderful artist. The gift of love he wants for spirit calls. Somehow mm. leaves it stronger when it's called. When you wait. Hallelujah. Thank you all for joining another night of monumental moments in God's Word. We're going to start out. We're, going to, we're just starting out a little praise and worship. This song is by Vicki Yogi. And we're going to uh, listen to this song. Then we're going to start out in prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's just to see your hand hold. I Mm. To be here 
dreams that only comes in the way. Yes. Yes, you can catch me. So praise God. I thank God for the open doors that he has allowed. Tonight we're going to be talking about is what I've been given enough. What I've been given enough. And we are to use God's gifts that he gave, gives us for his glory, for his glory. And so um, tonight we're going to start out in prayer, first of all, because I don't want to be, uh, I don't want to not do things in decent and in order. Uh, Father God, Father, we come before you right now, Lord. Father God, as humbly as I know how, Lord. Father God, I thank you for all things, Lord God. Father God, even when we don't understand why certain things are happening, why certain plagues are over this, and why the certain diseases are taking their people out, Lord God, why, why certain things are going on. But we know that in your word that it is written, hallelujah, that these things would be happening. So, Father God, it is our job to be ready to accept you as our personal Savior so that we can see our family friends again, Lord God. Father God, I just ask that you just touch the hung down heads, Lord God. Father God, the, the, the uh, Sparrell in Sedalia, Missouri right now, Lord God, and and and, and the aunties and the uncles of of uh, of uh, Harold Sparrell, Lord God, um, of Maurice, Father God. I know him as Maurice, Lord God. So, Father God, we ask, Lord God, that you touch and heal and deliver you right now, Lord God. Father God, take the pain away, Lord God. A parent does not want to bury their child, Lord God. So, Father God, even though Maurice is an older man now, but Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for his life. We thank you for the good man that he was, Lord God. Father God, we ask, Lord God, that you touch and heal Miss Helen right now, Father. Father God, we just ask, Lord God, that you send comforting angels all around her bed at night, Lord God. Let her rest, Lord God. Let her be at peace, Lord God. Father God, she's just lost her husband. And she lost her. Uh, 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 she lost another son uh, six or seven months ago or a year ago, Lord God. Father God, she's lost this son, Lord God. So, Father, we ask, Lord God, that you touch right now. Keep her, Lord God. Father God, in the midst of her, 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 her not understanding, Lord God, in the midst of everything, Lord God. Father God, protect her and keep her. Father God, touch each sister, each um, the sister Denise, Lord God. Ch touch his brother David, Father God, and, and the other brother and the cousins and the aunts and the uncles, Lord God. Father, we know that your ways are not our ways. Your thoughts are not our thoughts. You are high and lifted up in your train and it is in the temple. So, Father God, we just ask, Lord God, that you take our minds, Lord God, and let us meditate on your word and on you day and night, Lord God. Let us be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that we bring forth good fruit, Lord God. Father God, help us to be fruitful. Help us to do the things that we need to do, Lord God. Help us to be who we are supposed to be in your word, Lord God. Help us to know that what you've given us is enough, Lord God. Father God, that whatever you do, Lord God, that it is for your glory. It is that, Lord God, that we do all things. And we, and even though we may not understand all things, and we may not have knowledge of all things, and we may not have wisdom of all things. But Father God, we ask, Lord God, God that you give us the wisdom. You give us the understanding. You give us the comfort, Lord God. Father God, we ask, Lord God, that we that you continue to touch those that are all over this country, Lord God, that are dealing with COVID-19, Lord God. Father God, let us not live in fear, Lord God, but let us be let us, let us be mindful. Let us let, let us understand that this is something, and it is something that we need to be concerned about. That we need to be uh, to be obedient to those that have ruled over us, Lord God. But Father God, give those that have ruled over us over us the right mind and the right attitude that they are teaching the people and telling the people to do the right thing. Father God, we ask, Lord God, that you touch each household that's at the sound of my voice right now, Lord God. Bless them and keep them, Lord God. Touch them right now in the mighty hand of Jesus, Lord God. Touch them right now. Which Let them feel the power of the Holy Spirit. Let it, may it rest, rule, and abide forevermore. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Father God, I thank you. I thank you for those that are on the line on tonight. And we're going to do our warrior's prayer. Hallelujah. Um, Heavenly Father, here I am again prepared for battle. Today, I claim victory over Satan by putting on the whole armor of God. Hallelujah. I put on the girdle of truth. 
May I stand firm in the truth of your word. Hallelujah. So I will not be a victim to Satan's lies. I put on the breastplate of righteousness. Hallelujah. May it guard my heart from evil. So I will remain pure and holy. Washed in the precious blood of Jesus Christ and protected under his blood. I put on the shoes of peace. May I stand firm in the good news of the gospel of Jesus so that your peace will shine through me. That it will shine through me and be a light to everybody that I encounter. Hallelujah. I take the shield of faith. May I be ready for the Satan's fiery darts of doubt, denial, and deceit. I, so that I will not be vulnerable to Satan's defeat. I put on the helmet of salvation. May I keep my mind focused on you, Lord, so that Satan will not have a stronghold over any of my thoughts. I take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. May that two-edged sword of your word be ready in my hands so that I can expose the tempting words of Satan. By faith, let's say this together. By faith, your warrior has put on the whole armor of God. I am now, and you are now prepared to live our days in victory and in a spiritual victory, victorious life. Hallelujah. So tonight's lesson, we've already heard a word, I mean, a song. We've already prayed. Hallelujah. And now we're going to get into the word of God. We're going to get into the word of God is what I've been given by God is what I've been given, what I've been gifted by God. Good enough. How are we to sit up here and act like that what God gives us, we aren't satisfied. We are to use our gifts for God's glory. Not to be shown, not to be seen, but for God's glory. The scriptures in 1 Corinthians 1, 26 and 29. We're going to get in the word. I, I like to, when I say a scripture, in case it's really long, I like to read the scriptures. We're going to get in the book in, in Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 1, 26 through 29. Uh, 1 Corinthians, y'all get a pen and paper and get in here with me, okay? 1 Corinthians 1, 26 through 29. Now I'm going to do like Mother Alexander used to teach me in training for service. I'm going to read the verse ahead and the very the verse below. That way we get a full understanding of who, what, when, where, and why in the gospel. Okay, so we're going to read 1 Corinthians 1, 25. We're going to start at 25. Because the foolish of God is wiser than man, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For ye see, for ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God hath chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of this world to confound the things which are mighty. And and base these things on the world. And these things, I mean, excuse me, and base these things on the world. And things which are despised have God chosen. Yea, and things which are not to bring to not things that are. In verse 29, that no flesh shall glory in his presence, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. And and so the sermon, this uh, lesson actually uh, encourages us as believers to use our talents and our abilities that God has given us to serve him. That's all we're supposed to be doing, to serve God, because that's what God gave us these abilities and these gifts to do. So um, so when we sit up here and we say, I don't think that what I, I'm not good enough or, or, or I don't know how to do this and I don't know how to do that. God gave us certain things because he wants us to use them for his glory. Few people really are or really do their best. A lot of us don't always do our best. We think that we uh, miraculously can just go do things, you know, but 
we don't always do our best. Nature has blessed a few with great talents and abilities. He's given so many things. God has given so many things. And I say nature, nature has blessed a few with great talents and abilities, but it's God. It's God that blessed a few of us, many of us with great talents and abilities. We may not all know them. We may not know what's what's uh, what we should be doing, but we need to pray and ask God to show us he, we, we have talents and abilities. He's given everybody something. These, uh, but, uh, people often become proud. They become self-centered. They feel themselves to be superior than other people. And for that reason, many times they fail to make the proper use of some of these, uh, Beyonce and some of these people like that, if I just had the money that they had, I could accomplish so many more things for the kingdom. If my circumstances were different, if I just didn't have all of the kids I had, I could, be, I could have a whole lot of money. If I, if I had just been able to win that lotto, come on now, if, if I could have just did this and if I just could have did this, I would have did so much more for the kingdom of God. So we always thinking that we, our circumstances would be different. We would be doing a bit more. I would be hoping to do something different. But all these things, all this, like the dreamer who says, tomorrow I'll be great. And yet today they do nothing. I hope I'm talking to somebody right now because make this about yourself. Make the best of who you are. Make the best of yourself that God has given you. Don't just don't just think that it is something that you uh, take for granted, the good things that God has given you. You will always be yourself. You can never be anybody else. So why wish to be like Beyonce or, or Janet Jackson? Or I know I'm, I'm old now because I don't know all the new people. Anymore. But all these different people do you do don't wish to be like them be exactly who God made you to be um, it will be through those powers and abilities you now possess that God gave you it is not it it is of no use to think about and worry about and want and all those types of things that you are not, that you are not. Instead of working on the things that God gave you, instead of dealing with the talents that he gave you. You were only yourself. You might as well face that. You can't change who you, you can't change who you are like that in case God blesses you to be similar or to have some of the same talents and gifts and, and opens doors for you to be like that. But I'm, I'm saying all that to say, be who God has you to be. Things may look very small compared with those of some of those of other people. You may you may look like things that you have is very small compared to, you know, some of the stars out there, or some of the politicians out there, or some of the, um, or some of the ball players out there, or some of the. Uh, some of the new movie stars and, and, and things like that. You may look at yourself and think, wow, my talent's not really anything. Or, or some of the renowned preachers and stuff. Some of the, some of the people that's dry, you know, pe preachers that have mansions that's living over in mansions and, 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 and able to buy planes and, and all those. You may look at yourself and say, man, I don't, I don't possess all of those things. And you may think that there's no use, that you have no use and that you are not as somebody else is. And, and then you become envious about another person's talents. But keep in mind, keep it in your forefront that you are who God made you. You might as well face that, the fact that and endeavor to make the best possible use of the gifts that God has given you. Be who you are. They may look very small compared to those of some others, and they are all you have. That may be the, the only gift that you have. And it may seem small. Time spent troubling yourself because you're not 
greater is worse than wasting the time. It's time wasted. I mean, it, it's, it's, if you sit up there and you worry about all that you don't have and all that you can't be and all that you didn't accomplish and all those different types of things. The question now is, shall I improve and make use of what I have? Shall I improve? Shall I be trying to do better with what God has given me? Man is capable of great development. We know that. We've sent people to the moon. We're, we're good in electronics and, and computer programming and, and we're lawyers and doctors and, and, and business people and you have your own business. There's a lot of things out there that you have, have been able to develop and be who you are. I, hand, strength, mind, will, in fact, the whole man may be proper efforts be taught and developed and expanded until he becomes something very different from what he was at first. The blessing of God will help us help us much, but that will not take the place of our own determined and persevering efforts. God gives us things, but he expects us to do what we're supposed to do with it. God doesn't give us a gift and tell us exactly how he wants it done and da 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 And if you don't, God gives us free choice and free will. But he expects us to do what he's given us. He expects us to do right by what he's given us. He expects us to take what he's given us, work it. Work out your own soul salvation with truth. You're a trimmer. He expects us to work out our blessings and do the things that he's called us to do with the things he's blessed us with. Have you ever attempted to develop your own self? Have you ever thought about Have you ever tried to just make yourself? Do you think that because your ability now seems small, they never can be greater? Let's think about it. You were only a child one time. You were only a child once. You did not think that you never would be larger. You you always assume because when if you ever remember when you, when you were a kid, people would ask you, "What do you be? What, what do you want to be when you grew up?" You had the mindset of knowing that you were not always going to be a little child. That you were going to grow up one day. So you did not think that you were going to never grow up. You looked eagerly forward to, to the time when you would be large enough to be a grown adult. I know that for a fact because I used to always, man, I'd be glad when I'm grown. I'm going to leave this house when I'm grown. I'm going to do this when I'm grown. They ain't going to be able to tell me nothing because I'll be grown. <laughs> y'all know y'all done did it, okay? At least I ain't going to say well, but most of us have, have acted like that at some point in our life, thinking that we... Had it, we we was gonna be able to do everything as long as we got grown. When we got grown, each day you ate and you drank and you breathed and you exercised and you did the things that you could to produce. Everybody's fine, Crystal. Thank you. And you did everything to produce the growth that you desired. You used what you had of energy and of strength, and thus increased them. We ought to be as wise in the spiritual things that God gives us as in the natural things. Paul said to Timothy, neglect not the gift that is in thee. Y'all know, y'all remember that song, stir up the gift. Stir up the gift. Because we are supposed to stir up the gift. We are supposed to, we are, we are not to neglect the very gift that God gave us. We have to water that gift. We have to exercise that gift. We have to practice that gift. We have to work it out. You must make use of what he, what you have. Then God will bestow more upon you. Too much is given, much is required. But So if you're given little and you don't do anything with the little that you got, how do you expect God to give you more? Hmm. So you must make use of what you have so that he can give you more. But he cannot bestow more until you use with, with all your might the things that he has given you. The, new, the raw material of what you, may, what you may be, what you will be 
depends on the use you make of the materials and the things that he's giving you. I hope I'm talking to you. Under that. I'm trying to go slow and I'm trying to do it where I'm breaking it down so we all understand it. It depends on the use you make of the material and the things that he's given you. The responsibility for the final product lies within you. It lies within you. You're responsible for that final product. You're responsible for the thing that God gave you and what you did with it. You're responsible for it. Stop blaming everybody else. Hallelujah. Develop your mind. Develop your soul. Develop patience. Develop your courage. Develop your faith. Develop your loyalty. Develop your justice. Develop your determination. Develop your benevolence. Develop your endurance to stay with it. Develop your cheerfulness to be cheerful in, in everything. Develop your diligence. Develop the industry that you want to work it in. And all those other qualities that make up the real Christian manhood are and to keep trying. You have always a failure. If you don't continue to try and try and try, remember the little engine that could try and understand that the little thing that God did might think it's little. I don't know how if you don't work it through, uh, work it with God's glory and work it to, he will never manifest it. He will never make it bigger. You will not be, you will be a failure and you will not be a success. I hope I'm helping somebody right now. David, when we think about David, David, when he went against Goliath, Ah, y'all know the story. Had only his homemade sling. Oh, homemade sling. Y'all know the little rubber thing you put the rock in and my brother used to play with one when he was a kid. Um, he had one sling and a few little stones from the brook. But he went up to the battle with unshaken faith. He had unshaken faith. He was a little bitty stature. David. But he went up there with full faith, knowing that my God is with me. So if God be for me, who can be against me? He went up and he went up to that, to that, uh, went up there with all, all, uh, heart. He went up with all heart. He went up with all heart. He did everything. He did what God called him to do. He was not scared. He was. He had confidence in God that God was going to allow him to slay the giant. Hallelujah. He had not much to start with. He only had that weapon. Hallelujah. But he went up to the battle with unshakable faith in God. Unmovable faith in God. Standing on the word of God. And, his, and he is famous to this day. As an Israel deliverer, he delivered Israel because he was faithful and he and he had uh, confidence in God. And he took what little he had and made it much with God. Samson had only a jawbone, but he did not stop a, a moment to cry out that fact. That's all, that's all Samson had was the jawbone. He did have the three things necessary for himself to himself. He had courage, he had determination, and he had faith. If we go to that word faith, he had faith. And we are told that in the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. And the result was that he slew thousands of enemies and put the rest to flight. That means they ran, they were scared of him now. He showed up and he showed out. Hallelujah. Have you not as much equipment as any of these men have? Don't you just have a little too? But the result of the efforts are were glorious. If you think you have but little to use for God, just add to it courage, determination, faith, confidence, loyalty, trust. Did I say determination? Did I say faith? Did I say trust? Did I say faith? Did I say determination? Did I say faith? Did I say trust? Hallelujah. Those are the things that we need. Hallelujah. And we go and we go ahead. Hallelujah. You will find that in the spirit of the Lord will make you mighty. It will make you mighty. Do not worry because you have so little. Don't worry that you have little to give. 
Don't worry. Just be sure you give what you can. You do what you can for the kingdom of God. You do what you can for the Lord. You do what you can in the midst of all the things that you wish you could do. Do what you can. Do what you call to do. Hallelujah. Do not worry because you seem to have so little ability. Because what God does, he takes your little ability. He adds those things that you don't think you have. He adds them in. And then you're able to do things that you didn't know that you were able to do. Hallelujah. With faith. With faith. But you know what the word says? Without faith, there is possible to, without faith it is impossible to please him. So we know that it takes faith. It takes determination. It takes courage. Hallelujah. Do not worry because you seem to have the little bit of things. And so little time. Don't worry about the little time that you think you have. Don't think about the little opportunity. But do not fail to use what you have. Make the best of what you've got for God. Also, use your environment. Use your environment. Hallelujah. Y'all, come on now. Use your environment. It is, it is of no use to say if my surroundings were different. If you think about, well, man, I can't do anything because I live in Little Sedalia, Missouri, or I can't do anything because I live in Little Tacoma, or Little Kent, or Little uh, Fort Benning, Georgia, or Little Fort Lewis, or Little... And don't think of it like that. Don't think of the fact that I live in Little White Plains, Maryland, or, or that I live in Little Washington, D.C. Hallelujah. If my surroundings were different, don't think about your little surroundings. And don't say, if I were in some other place, if I was just in another place, then I could do better. Could you really? There's been people that move to different places and they don't necessarily do better. Possibly you could. I did better. I did better in some places than I did in other places. But it's because of maturity and growth. Are you doing what you can in your present environment? Ask yourself, am I doing everything that I can do right here? Or can I do more? Are you doing what you can? Are you trying your best? If you can change your environment for the better, do it. Stop waiting for somebody else to do it. If you can change your environment for the best, if you can change your community for the best, if you can do what God's given you to do, the best that you can do, and allow God to do the rest, then your little becomes best. Your little becomes better and your better becomes best. Then decide to do your best where you are. Whatever environment that's in. You may dream of an ideal condition, but will you will it not find them? But you, but uh, wait a minute, wait, 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 let me start over. You may think of an ideal situation. You may think of the ideal condition that you should be in. But you will not find them in this world. You won't find the perfect spot in this world. Whether you succeed or whether you forfeit, whether you succeed or whether you fail depends less on your environment, actually, than it does on yourself. So people that say, Yes, you're a product of your environment. But you can change your environment to be your, for, for your environment to be the product of you. You can change those things. You can turn it around with the Lord. You don't have to. I, 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 I've, I've been in an environment where it's been poor. I've been in an environment where I've had little. I've been in an environment where I was the only black kid. I've been in an environment where I've been... A lot of black people. I've been in an environment where I didn't have a job. I've been in an environment where I had a good job. I've been in an environment where I didn't have an education. I've been in an environment where I have a lot of education. If you will be true to the best that you that is in you, if you be true and do the best that's in you, your environment will not have the influence that you can imagine, that you imagine that it will have. Your environment doesn't have to be a killing factor. Your environment, your environment can be a growing factor. It can be a favorable circumstance.
but it should never take the place of your soul qualities that God has given you. You are to develop those qualities. You are to develop your soul in Christ Jesus. And you will master that environment. All of us can't always move to a better environment. We can't always financially move. But it takes that move, it takes something inside of you, that mindset, a change in the mindset. Hallelujah. You can't let your environment master you. Be your best. Do your best in whatever place you're in. Make the best of every situation. Hallelujah. There's a way for you to succeed no matter what you're up against. Whatever you're up against, there's a way for you to succeed. There is no sin common to man that God will not make a way of escape. So make the best of your situation. God will help you find that way if you are determined to find it. Hmm. I'm going to say that again. God will help you find that way if you are determined to find it. If you have faith in him. Never permit yourself to spend time in uh, uh, thinking about and, and drooling over and, 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 and lamentating, lamenting over yourself or your circumstances. Keep the following thought. Keep this determination ever before you. Think about it. Think about and be determined. I will make the best of myself. I will make the best of myself. Hallelujah. And my circumstances. I will do all that I can through Christ Jesus to make my circumstances better. This is true and it can only be the road to success. So we see, we, we see in, in our text that we read, uh, oh, actually, actually, this one I didn't read. It's Exodus 3, 9 through 11 and 4, 1 through 5. And that's talking about, that's in Moses. We're talking about Moses. What Moses had was nothing until he used it. Moses had that staff. What Shamgar had was nothing until God, until he used it for God. I'm going to say had was nothing until he used it for God. That was the ox going. A pointy stick. That's what it is. It's just a pointy stick. A high tech military weapon. Was that what it was? God used it to accomplish his purpose. For the, in the history of Israel, then we and then we talked about Samson. Was what Samson had was nothing until he used it for God. What Samson had, it was nothing. Jawbone, jawbone. It was a donkey's jawbone, a powerful killing tool. Used it for God's glory. He was able to use it, uh, but God was able to use it to his glory. He used it like that. The widow's might. I can tell you story after story in the Bible. The widow's might. The might. What the widow had was nothing. It was really nothing until she gave it to God. Just like we have little that we have sometimes if we, if we just give it to God in the right spirit. Is the two mites a whole lot of money? No, it's not. It's nothing really. But God used her gift from her heart more than the rich men's gift that they gave or that they had. He used it more. So what I'm trying to say, and I'm going to sum it up. Our lesson's almost over. I'm summing it up. What do you have to offer to God? Is it much or is it little? The bottom line to this whole lesson is to all of these stories is not that it's a magic rod, not that it's a multitude, multiplied, multiplied lunch. It's not about it being a jawbone. It's not about it being a miracle pointed stick or the two mites, the two cents. <laughs> the bottom line really is the 
majesty and the and the um the power of God of a mighty and powerful God who can use whatever we have what little that we think we have if you give it to God give it back to him have you made that commitment to God have you made a commitment to God that says whatever I have Lord, is yours all that I am I'm yours all that I'm not I'm yours Take me and make me who you will. Make me over again. Make me who you want me to be for your glory. Take what little talents that I think I have. Take little things that that I don't even consider them to really be much of anything. But you take them, Lord, because you gave them to me and make them much. Make them much for your glory. Not for me, but for your glory. For what I can do for you, Lord. That's what we want. That's what we want. We want to be able to use what God gave us for his glory. Hallelujah. For his glory. Imagine what God could do with what you have. Imagine what he could do with what you have. I want you to give it over to him today. Right now. Right now. Give everything that you have over to him. Because only he can do what he needs to do with it. Only he can multiply what you have. Only he can make what you have to be perfected. So why not give it to him? Why not give it to him? All that I have, all that I am, all that I want to be, all that all that you've given me, Lord, it's yours. It's yours, Lord. I give it back to you. I give myself away to you, Lord. So we can be used for your glory. That's all I have on tonight, y'all. That's all I have on tonight. We're going to leave out of here with Travis Green in You Waited. Hallelujah. No, uh, no, 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 no. That's not what I want to hear. That's not what, that's not what I have. We are going to listen to, um, we're going to listen to um, Tasha Cobb and Gracefully Broken. Gracefully Broken by Tasha. Okay. Gracefully broken by Tasha. Yeah. Let the Lord minister to your spirit. We need to break you to break you to promote you. Break you to Hallelujah. Thank you, Auntie Juanita. He doesn't hurt you. He doesn't. He breaks you. He doesn't be sure. We need to be broken. Hallelujah. Gracefully broken. Anybody been gracefully broken? Hallelujah. Woo. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. So, Father, so make me break me and make me over, Lord. Thank you for handling us. Hallelujah. Let this minister to your spirit. Gracefully broken by Tasha Cobb. Right there in this I'm not a singer. I wish I could. Thank you for listening to me. Hand in these hands and multiply. God, all that I am inside my heart. Oh, the altar again set me on fire. Set me on fire. Hallelujah. Come on. Having these hands and bolts of go, God, all that I am in front of my heart, on the altar again, set me on fire, set me on fire, here I am, God, arms wide open.
Strong to leave there, you will never fail. Lord, purpose and you will always end. You will be with you. Will be with you. Here I am. I'm safe. Arms wide open. Oh, pouring out my love. God, I pray joy. I'll be getting all tongue tied in the second book that I wrote. Was, I was somebody's trash, and now I'm God's treasure. This book, you can get it through on Amazon. You can get both books on Amazon. And um, if you get if um, if you call if you let me know, I can have them sent to you myself. Um, you can cash at me. You can send me a, a cashier's check, money order. Um, I do PayPal. I do Zelle. Most uh, most of your cash things online, I could actually take money like that as well. Um, you can find me on Marla Facey at yahoo.com, Marla Facey um, on Cash App with the little Cash App sign. Um, you can send it to me and then email me your address or text me your address and you can uh, get this. Get this um, maybe I'm finished through the uh, copyright um, this week sometime, so... I am hoping that the new book will be a success with you. Be a dysfunctional family member survivor. That's what this, that's what the book is called. Say amen to the healed you. And what we're gonna what I'm gonna be discussing in that book is we come through situations where we've been rejected, we've been um, 
Maybe our marriages haven't been right. Maybe our, our kids haven't grown, haven't done right. Maybe you've been, maybe you've made some bad decisions in your life. Maybe you've been on drugs. Maybe you've been in and out of jail. Maybe, there's all kinds of things that cause you to have been, um, to have, uh, blamed someone else for your behaviors. And so we're talking about stop blaming other people for your own dysfunction. So we're going to teach you the steps on how to um, turn your life around, how to make some better decisions for yourself so that you can live for God and knowing that God can do all things and he can change all things and know that. So that book, that's what that book is going to be about. And it should be coming out really soon. And so when I get it and I get it okay and I, and I, I'll be bringing it out here for you all so you can see it as well. So, um, I thank God that God gave me the ability to uh, want to write. I actually enjoy it, um, and I am actually getting ready to finish um, my degree. So I praise God for that. He has opened up many doors, and I praise Him. I just want to do be. I want to be found doing God's will, no matter how or what it takes. And so I just praise God that I want to be obedient to God's word first of all. And in being obedient, um, you have to do. Um, you have to do things that you may not want to do, but God called you to do it. And um, so, but I wanted to make a correction um, on from last week. I think um, someone actually wrote me and said that um, that I had said that God hears all sinners, I mean all non-saved people's prayers. And what I was saying is, yes, He does hear all prayers. He hears everything because he's an he's an omnipresent God. He's a he's a, uh, a, a he's a, a God that hears everything. He knows everything. He sees everything. But does he hear a sinner? Does he hear a person that's not coming to him and accepting him as their personal savior? God tells us that he hears he hears, but he does not he does not answer the call. He does not answer the call of an unsaved person in case they're calling him to salvation and calling him to get their life right with Christ. So the answer would be yes and no, I guess, is how I will say it. But I don't want to never steer you wrong. I never want to say anything that is inappropriate or wrong. But but I do believe uh, in his word and I do I did take you to the word. And so um so I but I don't want to steer anybody wrong and I'm I'm the first one to sit up there if somebody takes it the wrong way or anything. If you have any questions about anything that I talk about, sometimes you get so fast into what you're saying that you you say something that you didn't mean to say because the devil still will try to jump in there and get in get in something. So I want to make sure that whatever I'm saying, I'm saying it correctly. So if you ever hear me say something that you're not sure at, you're not sure about, or you or you want to um, go ahead and send me scriptures and everything, I will correct what I'm saying because um, I, I want to be found doing what God called me to do and what's right. Um, with that being said, we're going to end out tonight with um, Travis Green and You Waited, okay? That's the last song for this evening. Travis Green and You Waited, if I can find it. Hold on. Oh, where's my, my YouTube? Is, um, I love YouTube because I love, look, I love listening to, um, I love listening to music. I have a YouTube channel, too, that I used to put all my stuff on, but I, I got so busy, I don't even do that anymore. But um, but I need to start doing that because I love YouTube. And um, <laughs> my daughter loves YouTube as well. So we're going to hear Travis, uh, Travis Green and You Waited. Okay? There we go. I found it. I found it. Okay. Y'all enjoy this. Y'all, thank you for joining me for another night of Mighty Little Moments in God's Word. Come back next week. God bless you. You came out your way. The last ending song. God bless you. I don't have any rights to this song. To speak to me. <laughs> what an amazing grace. That you show. So patiently and you waited for me just 
for me. Oh. You called out my name to my past cover to my shame.